Hi, Joe with Aptera Accessories. With all the excitement at Aptera's headquarters this month in assembling PI2 and PI4 to be displayed at CES, they didn't do a monthly update. So I think I would go over a little bit of the PI program, uh, some of the information that might have been missed, and some of the details and information we can gain from looking at the updates that they did have. So the one thing that Chris Anthony had mentioned as they were planning to start the production tent builds is that they were going to use soft tooling. And that terminology really wasn't explained. And I do have a little bit of background in understanding what soft tooling is. I actually own a car that used a soft tool to custom build or stamp a steel body panel. So the steel body panel for the car uh, was stamped using what you would call a Kirksite die. Kirksite is a low temperature zinc alloy. And in the context of the car that I'm restoring, this die only had to be used to stamp 100 parts. Uh, the use of Kirksite uh, or other materials like that is a very low cost material compared to a high strength uh, steel stamp and die that would produce hundreds of thousands of parts. Now you might wonder if I would have a better example of other manufacturers using soft tool. And the perfect example of that would be the Zuzu Via Cross. Some people might remember this vehicle from the late 1990s and early 2000s. But what the Zuzu did is they actually took a concept car and actually brought it to low volume production. So for Zuzu to have built standard production hardened stamp and dies to produce the vehicle would not have been financially viable to have a program. So Zuzu turned to ceramic body dies. With the ceramic body dies they built, they were able to build about 5,958 cars before the dies wore out. These soft tools don't affect the quality of the part produced, but they do affect how many parts can be made from the tooling. And this is where I think Aptera has gone down to build uh, the metal reinforcements for body, the crash braces. Now, the Suzu was built in the early 2000s. Technology has gotten a lot better for these ceramic body dies, and now you can usually stamp tens of thousands of parts out of one ceramic die, as opposed to where Zuzu was only able to stamp a couple thousand. For Aptera to do this, this is uh, a financially smart decision because if they can get 10,000 parts out of one of these ceramic body dies, they could, at that point when the die starts to wear out, recommission another soft tool if money is tight or if they are uh, in a better financial state, commission a hardened steel tool for high volume production. As we look over the PI program and the videos that were put out by Aptera, there were little Easter eggs that were dropped here and there along the line. One of the Easter eggs I noticed, which because I'm kind of into cars as a person, uh, the dampers for the front suspension and rear are actually made by KW Motorsport. These are very high quality parts. I'm really hoping that these parts will see production and that Terra is just not using them for testing and final suspension tuning. To have this type of suspension damper shock, or some people would call it coilover assembly, I think is positive and very interesting if you want to upgrade or change your car later. Another one of the little Easter eggs I saw is Aptera had an update video where they transitioned the 3D model of the Aptera, and I'll include a picture here, into the actual car. And you can see right underneath the front bumper, the nose cone area on the passenger side, what looks like the bead could be a radiator. It's a black box, about one square foot, maybe a little bit bigger. And you can see it in a couple of their other updates later on, especially in like the low volume or, excuse me, the low speed tests of PI2. But if we really look at it, you can tell it's not a radiator because a radiator would have plastic tanks on the sides. And if you look at the part, you can actually see it has tubes coming out of the sides that turn back into the assembly. 
This type of construction can normally be seen with an oil cooler or an air conditioning condenser. So I don't think this is a radiator that we're seeing in these updates, which some people have assumed. It's also very interesting because the EMR3 drive unit that Aptera is now using is sourced from Vitesco, which used to be part of the Continental Group. And if we look at the front brakes, we can actually see parts that are also being sourced from Continental. Now, it's been said that the front calipers were provided by ATE. ATE is a division of Continental. But in the one update from Aptera, I could just make out the part number on the brake rotor pad on the caliper. Quick Google search was able to recognize that part number and it came up as a Volkswagen Audi Group part for a T5, T6 Volkswagen multivan. So the front pads and calipers are actually shared with the Volkswagen multivan, which uh, for our European Aptera fans, it'll be easier for you to get parts because those are already in your market. It was also very exciting to see with Aptera's updates and bills to CES that they actually now have a full solar hatch. Um, you know, we haven't seen this before. Gamma never had a solar hatch put on because for Aptera to invest in the tooling to make one custom solar hatch for one vehicle, I don't think would have been a financially um, wise decision. And they did not make that choice and finally decided to show us the real full solar hatch with the vehicle that will be in production. So now you might be wondering if there is a air conditioning condenser or oil cooler mounted or behind the front bumper of that tower. Where could the radiator possibly be? If we look at the one photo of PI, I believe it's PI2, when it was outside of Aptera's headquarters, you can actually see on the driver's side, there is a orange, um, looks like fan shroud with a fan. So I actually do believe the radiator is mounted in the body assembly, like they have, sa have said for so long. And I believe this is where it's located. And uh, you can look at the picture yourself and tell me what you think down below. So I have to say, I'm really excited that I'm flying out to CES tomorrow, even though uh, I might have some flight problems with some of the weather across the country, but I'm still gonna be there. And I'm excited to see everything in person firsthand and can bring you what I can from the show. Now, I know there's a whole bunch of other uh, Aptera content creators out there. I also hope to meet some of them. And, uh, have an app tower party. Comment down below. Tell me what you think of my quick little uh, review of the PI programs and some of the little Easter eggs I found. Also, comment down below on some of the accessories you would like to have in your app tower when we pick it up from uh, Carlsbad. Maybe your top five. Uh, this is Joe, and I'll see you from CES.